What's up everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm actually covering BTD6, Fall Guys is going to be tomorrow, and here's the reason why. Update came out last night right after the stream, as I predicted, and I wanted to cover this and tell you all about the changes. So I'm going to go over the patch notes, I'm going to go over the new Paragon. There's a secret on this map and maybe even a new monkey coming up. First, let's talk about this map secret. I found about this via one of my viewers telling me that they found on a Reddit post. If you tap on some of the cracks and stones, then you'll see that this user found there is a skeleton in the wall. But more specifically, the order was brought up by Zakin, I believe. And here is the photo that they linked showing the order in which you need to press them. So if I hit all of them while doing this, you can see in the wall there is beginning to crack. If I open up the wall, then it should expose a skeleton. I do believe that there is supposed to be a head, but I can't seem to get that one to work. Like, I keep trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong to get the final crack to appear and get the skeleton head, but I don't know. Cool little secret, though. Next up, we have the patch notes for balance changes, new features, and everything else. I will link the patch notes in the description, and if you do not want to hear about this, I will put a time on top of the screen right now for when to skip to. There's talk of two big things first, which are the Paragon and Contest Territory, which I'll touch on a little more in this video. As you can see some of the other things though, we have the new map Quarry and also Voidora. Voidora is probably now one of my favorite skins in the game just because it looks really cool and really mysterious. Quarry is also a really fun map, honestly, even though I was a little worried it might just be another boring big Z twice. But it is pretty fun and a pretty good map. Now, for the big changes or balance changes. As far as big changes or additions that they have listed, there is a hero counter on the hero screen as well as on the achievement screen for collectionists. There is big refactoring for monkey knowledge to improve memory, load time, and several other things. More for hero skin data, boss autoplay behaviors change, and there's now checkpoint at round 20. Restart functionality is added to the pause menu for race modes, which holy pecking crap. I could not have been waiting any longer for a restart button, because leaving back to the home menu, going back in, and then trying again really freaking sucked. There's some bug fixes, which you can read through if you want, but most of them are just smaller things. The only one I'm going to bring mention to is one that I found quite comedic, that the Scottish flag is no longer called New Zealand flag when playing in German. I don't know how that got messed up, but honestly, that's pretty entertaining. But now for the actual balance changes. Boomerang Monkey is getting a Moab Ab press increase in his price from 2200 to 2400 It was just a little too good for slowing Moabs. Bomb Shooter is getting Moab Mauler, just Mauler damage decreased, Assassin saying the same. Ice is getting changed to be a little different for Enhanced Freeze. 010 is going from 2.2 to 1.75 for the freeze duration. Deep Freeze is going to stay at 2.2 though. Permafrost is going up by $50. Cryo Cannon is going for the attack delay from 1 to 1.2. And Price is going up by about 300 Apparently, Cryo Cannon was a little too good for their liking. Next up, we have the Sniper Monkey being too good with Shrapnel. I kind of wish this was a joke, but all the balance changes here surround Shrapnel. Bouncing Bullet Shrapnel is getting decreased by one, Unpyrus. Supply Drop Shrapnel is getting decreased by one, Pyrus. Main Moab Shrapnel is getting the Moabs that it hits from 3 to 2 seconds, BFB's 1.5 to 1, and ZOMG's 0.75 to 0.5. Ripple Moab is also going down lesser than that. 7 seconds for the Moabs to 0.45. 6 seconds for the BFBs to 4. 3 from the ZOMGs to 2. 4 for DDTs to 2.5. And 0.75 for BADS to 0.5. That is the stun and debuff duration for both of them. So no one's going to buy 502 Snipers NK. Unless they are exclusively fighting bad balloons, no one is going to buy 502. Why would they do that when they can hit multiple balloons instead? I could be wrong, probably am, but more than likely, never going to need anything outside of 502. Next up, the monkey sub. Apparently it was too good for decamoing, which I thought was its whole niche for the top path, so now they're giving it a pierce limit. 
300 does 100 pierce, 310 is 120, 320 is 150, and 500 is now 1000. I really don't know why they found this necessary, because I kind of thought the whole gimmick was, oh yeah, it's kind of the infinite pierce, but you need water and need to have a good place for it. But you know what? Who am I to judge? I'm not good at video games. Next up we have the Navark. Too good. Price increased by 50,000. This isn't going to change it being good, MK. Maybe you should buff the Boomerang Paragon instead. <laughs> Monkey Ace is actually getting the Nevermiss price increase, because Nevermiss was apparently too good, which I can definitely say was true. I kind of wish I did my Bloody Puddles Apocalypse before this, because I kind of relied on Nevermiss targeting. This is bad. It's going up by 600, but Spectre is going down by 600 because they don't think Spectre is worth the price. Pilot is getting its 030 and 040 blowback changed a little bit. It's going from 32 to 300 to 32 to 150. Support Chinook is staying the same though at 32 to 300. So just normal downdraft is going to be half as effective. Now, Wizard Monkey is actually getting a buff to its cross pathing for mid path. 130 oh, Dragon's Breath now targets through walls with Guided Magic. And 010 Wizard Fireball goes from 15 to 20 Pierce. That is actually a pretty nice change. Super Monkey, Legend of the Night was really garbage. <laughs> that, that's kind of it. Their specific words are Legend of the Night, outside of very specific niche challenges, isn't worth the cost as any more than a VTSG fodder. Which is true. So they're buffing Legend of the Night. So now it does increase damage from 5 to 10. Ceramic damage bonus is doubling from 2 to 4. And Moab bonus damage is going from 3 to 8. So, you might actually be able to use Legend of the Night. Might. Druid is getting a change because everyone kept buying 032, leaking all their lives, and just going to town. Because 030 was a little too easy, I was already buying 130 by accident. But now, the brambles are going from normal to sharp, and 130 turns the brambles back to normal. Spirit of the Forest is also getting base attack damage from 2 to 20. I don't know how that's going to affect things. I'm curious to mm -hmm. see now. Next up we have Spike Factory. Supermine's DOT damage is entirely insignificant for the price range of this tower. So it's going from 1 to 500. I love Supermines. Monkeyopolis was too good at space saving, so they're reducing it from generation per 2000 reduced from 300 to 200. Adora is getting a buff for True Adora, with the Ball of Light getting an increase for the ability pairs from 43 to 48, and the damage is going to 100 it looks like. Geraldo is getting a lot of changes. I'm not sure if I'm going to cover all these, but they're just small changes to his shop in order to make him more of a good character and not just straight up broken. They want Geraldo to be one of the best heroes, but they want you to be mechanically good with him for him to be one of the best heroes. So things like decreasing the Maelstrom stock, decreasing time, increasing price, making things matter more, and also his mustache will no longer contain hidden glue rats. Which is honestly the biggest nerf ever, and I don't know how Hooker Geraldo is going to financially recover from this. Bosses are also getting balanced, so D Tier 4 Vortex is going to have a stun radius increase from 60 to 65, and for each tier it goes up, it's going to be plus 5. So by the time you hit Tier 5 Vortex, the stun radius is going from 60 to 80, which is pretty good. There's always a lot of extra stuff going on here with the future that they're seeing, Except this one is going to be particularly interesting. They're giving us ideas for Update 33 and 34. Update 33 has the Ace Paragon, which will be interesting. New boss, Dread Balloon, two new maps, and quality of life changes. Update 34 will be the last update of the year, focusing on two more maps, some quality of life changes, but most importantly, a new tower being the Beast Handler. I am really excited for this one, honestly. Just because you're telling me there's a new tower, and I am beyond excited, because my stupid little brain will no longer be upset that there was a missing spot on the roster. Why has there been one monkey slot missing, NK? Thank you so much for adding this new monkey, which I am at least 80% sure is going to be magic. Now, time for one of the two main events. The Engineer Paragon that we've all been waiting for. I'm about to buy it, because as you can see I've been farming for a while. Level 10, it's fine. Here's how the Engineer Paragon works. Engineer Paragon has a, I'd say, shorter range of attack. 
and it shoots nails that do the pinning effect that works even up to Moab class balloons. This is a small stun and will help you probably deal with DDTs, ZOMGs. I'm not sure if it works on a bad because I've been shredding the bad with the Engineer Paragon's main source of damage, which would be his ability, which puts down sentries. These sentries come in three different forms. One of them shoots a laser that's similar to the Plasma Accelerator, one of them shoots lasers similar to the anti balloon, and the third one shoots something that's like a mix between a MAD missile and a Hydro Rocket missile. They do not pop all types of balloons, surprisingly, because purples are their biggest weakness outside of the rocket one, and there is a visual bug where they are affected by villages. Maybe an actual bug, but I haven't bothered testing. These three together all drop down their own little mini turrets, and when you sell them, they all explode. They're pretty good and can be placed anywhere on the map, which I actually think will be really cool for strategies, just because with the ability to place them anywhere on the map, you have a lot of freedom as to where you want to place the Engineer Paragon and how you want it to work. The Engineer Paragon also does overclock itself at the start of the round, it just doesn't have any good visual indicators. It's really, really good, at least for what I was testing it for, which was, well, the last like five rounds on Quarry, which doesn't mean much because all the Paragons can kind of rip up, except for Boomerang, because it's Boomerang. Still though, it's rather impressive, and I'm definitely going to give it a shot in the next boss balloon. I might make a video on that if you're interested. The turrets itself are good, but the melee attack is also good, as I'm going to try and show here. It fires relatively fast, and as you can see, the stunning effect right there on the ZOMGs. That's from the pin. Now, on to the final event. And finally, Contested Territory. Contested Territory is actually quite an interesting mode. You start off by making your team, which can consist of up to 15 people, and the friend system here is actually very helpful for getting your friends invited and on your team. Next up, when you open the map, you'll see a big old hexagon. Each team starts from their own side, and you can collect one of many different tiles. You can only collect adjacent tiles, and there are three different types from what I understand. There's normal tiles, relic tiles, and banner tiles. They can all have a various amount of different effects, such as least tier, boss balloon, race event, least cash, or anything else that I'm forgetting. Relics can be brought in for up to four with unlimited uses as well as daily rewards. You can steal from others, you can claim your own, you'll keep them as long as you have the lower score. There is a decay, so you have to be as careful as possible with what you're doing though. I'm going to start up and commentate over this Lich run, and I'm going to put it at a slightly faster speed just so I can actually get to the point of some of it. The boss balloons are the first two tiers of the boss balloons and are actually quite interesting. This one in particular was quite strange to make because the thing is, when you do a boss balloon, you're going to be farming a lot. And as you can see, my towers are Tac Ace Mortar Dartling Super Alk Druid NG. I actually had to restart this run because I thought Alk would be a good start. It was not. NG was. Now that I have the video going at 8 times speed, I'm going to explain the basic strategy here. With these tiles, you really have to adapt and figure out what your best options are. So for this, I wanted to have good money because I figured my strategy would be fighter plane spam. There is another problem though, that there is a cap on how many monkeys you can have. It is 17 normally, I believe, but I did bring in a relic, which gives me plus 1 to my cap of monkeys. It is worth mentioning that I also forgot about my daily relic until later, which I was worried about camo balloons, I could have just decamoed with my daily two camo tracks per battle. What's hard about this is you really need to think outside the box while still getting a good time. For example, I think I got about a five minute mark here, and that was a lot better than the previous team, just because I don't know if they were aware of anything for what they were doing for this one, or if they just tried to complete it. Something that seems very important about contested territory, grabbing banners and relics are obviously important. And that is also the reason I'm going for this tile. There is a regeneration relic, which I'm going to show off later. The boss balloon works like any other ranked boss balloon, whereas time will go down while the boss is on the screen, and if you let a round leak for a little too long, then it'll start counting towards your time. So, I just put down a bunch of fighter planes, killed it as fast as I could, and then from there, well, I actually lost like 30 seconds because I didn't notice there were fortified leads and I felt really stupid. But after that was solved, then I just went through, did Robert a gold nonsense again, and hit round 60 for the last one. I couldn't figure out what the best defense was. I went to go ask Yellow and he went offline for Discord as soon as I went to go ask him. So I'm like, eh, Operation Dartstorm. 
which actually went really well because I actually microed the plane for once. I know, what a shock, I'm actually microing for once. No, Spud, I'm not doing your challenges. Either way, though, Operation Dark Storm kind of rips it up and we hit the finish. Now we have that relic and I'm allowed to take it to whatever map I want. So I'm going to go over to this empty banner one and try and claim it. This is a least cache map, so I just want to use as little as possible. I did one of these earlier on Adora's Temple, and I just used Psy and a two or 102 Heli Pilot. It worked really well. But as you can see here, that 80 lives, I defended around without losing any, and it went up to 90. Relics like this are good, because if you have monkey knowledge, then that plus mana shield is basically 15 lives a turn if you don't suck at video games. Which I did. And, well, it caused me to die later in this run. I don't I hope you all enjoyed this video it. and are excited for this update. If you are, then make sure to subscribe to see more of this content coming out. And, well, I'll see you all next time.